So, mm -hmm. th so, so you could do that tour. Did you? And then you went straight to New Orleans after that, or what happened? I moved down there. You stayed in Seattle. Three of the guys moved down there. You, Brad, and Rogers, and Glenn all moved to New Orleans. I stayed in Seattle. Why'd you move there? It, you know, seemed like a good idea at the time. Mm -hmm. But, um, uh, you know, you can live there for cheap. You've lived yeah, down there before, it's right? It's amazing. Yeah, I, love it. I love it. Every time yeah. I would tour there, I never wanted to leave yeah, there. Yeah, I love it and there, that's too. Why Did you I'm, ever live there? Yeah, kind of. Yeah, you went down yeah. and stayed with Mike or something. Yeah, Mike and, and uh, yeah. I haven't seen his house. No, I've been in that house. Oh, yeah. it's amazing. Yeah, it's nice. Yeah, I'm supposed to go it's soon. Killer. It's like Mini Kingsway, actually. Yeah. Not Mini, but... I've been threatening for some time. I can't believe you haven't been there. So you moved down there. Where'd you Where'd you move? What neighborhood? Uh, I was in, I was on Magazine and Upper Line, mm -hmm. um, and Brad was a block away, and Glenn was like three blocks away, and we never saw each other. Right. We just went on different trips. I was a you know I went nuts. What'd you do? You know you know it's New Orleans. Yeah. <laughs> you went um, nuts. Yeah. You can imagine. Yeah. Yeah. And so you know I had I had fun, um, and um, then we started trying to write you know our record and Christopher I think was coming down at that time I don't yeah. know um, but then you know then we saw Kingsway mm -hmm. Dan Lamb and it was like oh that. man you know that's the place that's you know you gotta place. be in there the place is gorgeous. and mm -hmm. so that's where we did it and and eventually Christopher kind of came down there full time I lived in the Pontchartrain Hotel for a while and then I moved into the back of your place yeah you did yeah yeah this uh, is for soup for soup, yeah. 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 We because three of the guys live there, it just made more sense to run the business out of there. So well, Shannon Kingsway and I would too. I had an yeah. indoor pool. It yeah. was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> it was like it was but, but but it's I paid eight hundred dollars eight hundred dollars a month for this house. That place was great. With an and it was pool. like a, you know, the ceilings like huge high ceilings. With like, a back house too, by the way. A back house, yeah. back apartment. And yeah. and then it had a, an indoor pool. It was in a greenhouse that was attached. You could walk it was out. Amazing. Oh, it was amazing. The place was great. Damn. It was crazy. I'm confused on the timeline. So you did the first album. This was in 94. You did that tour, and then the tour ended, and then you guys took a break. Is that when you moved to New Orleans? Yeah, sort of. Yeah, right we then. We took a break. Rogers and I and Shannon went up to Mammoth and wrote some songs. That was all around that same time. So it wasn't and a breakup. It's just like, let's take some Oh, yeah, time no. Off. It was like, we've just worked our asses off. Uh, now take a minute. You know what I mean? Yeah. Everyone took a minute, and some people bought houses. You went back to L.A.? I went back to Seattle. I stayed or, in Seattle. Oh, Seattle, right. Yeah, I just stayed there because we had made the record, and I was like, well... And I'll you, just stay here. It's and great. he's the one who really, f like, really started learning about recording around then. And yeah. He bought and built you a studio sane. in his basement. I, and I, I don't know about sane, but mm. but I built a studio in Seattle and just got got right into like producing immediately. Mm -hmm. You know, right right in Seattle. So I don't know about sane, but I definitely. Well, you put the money into a positive direction. I did. I knew that I wanted to make records forever, and I thought, well, I could buy a nice car or I can buy an API. So I see, that's car. the thing that he has, and that's why I'll be destitute. Mm -hmm. and he you can won't. always use my API. You can always drive my API anytime yeah, you want. Yeah, and, I, and I'll, 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 I'll be calling him up for lunch. Like, Dude, come on, man. I, mean, I, I changed if just being, one more time. If being hipster uh, Matlock doesn't work out for you. <laughs> hipster Matlock, I love it. But yeah, so then Kingsway, and you meet Mike Napolitano, oh, who see. we immediately loved. I legend, mean, we were like, yeah, legend, yeah, legendary legend, yeah. dude yeah, for man. sure. He was great. Yeah. I miss Mike. Yeah, I do too. I, do I was too. just thinking about it in my head. I was like, boy, <laughs> I've had some fun too. times with I'd that guy, man. It's like, wait, I, told, I talked to him recently. I'm like, man, he's going to get him out of here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, he's yeah. great. And he produced our Nico record after Shannon passed away because we love Mike so much and he was there when we were making the soup record. We said, help us out for the Nico record. And he came up to Seattle and produce that Nico record with us. Nico's here. Is she still here? Yeah. No, she, she just, she, she left. She, I don't know. She, she left. Yeah. We should get her on here in the end. Yeah, I know. Did she split split? Somebody text her. But then Soup, how did you guys write that the, the whole album? You came down and then... Yeah, we were working a lot. I feel like we were rehearsing in the back of your... That little room that I... Yeah, I had a, I had a house, uh, you know, that had a, had some good space, you know. And so we, we kind of set up, like... It wasn't like full-on, you know, rehearsal rehearsal. It was like we're kind of working out ideas with a few amps and drums and whatever. But it was, yeah. it was um, you know, people kind of... It was different than the way we did it the first time, which is a lot more everybody's in the room at the same time. We so there was people like splitting so. off yeah. and like working yeah. together and you come in with an idea and then everybody kind of works it out. Who was producing it? Andy Wallace. Andy Wallace. So he came down for like two weeks, I think, right? And we just kind of played. Yep. He sat there and listened. He didn't really change much. Why'd mm -hmm. you go with him? Because he was popular. Mm -hmm. I have to be honest. <laughs> I, don't I don't remember know. being a part of the decision. <laughs> no, here, here's the truth. We wanted Mario... Caldetta, 
who did all those, um, if I'm saying his name BC right, Boys BC records. Boys records. And those I, things, yeah. In our mind, we were like, and, and Mario just made this record called, um, oh, I just forgot their name, it'll come to me. Uh, Mother Luscious, Tongue. Luscious, Jack. Luscious, Luscious Jackson. Jackson. But Mother Tongue. But Mother Tongue was this amazing band from L.A. Still around. And I they remember, are? Yeah, they were out back touring again. They opened up for us at the Palladium, remember? Huh. Yeah. But anyway, I remember hearing that. But anyway, the A&R guy from Capitol was like, yeah, no, you're not going to use, you know. And I don't think Mario was interested anyway. But um, And then at some point, Andy's name came came around what was going on with shannon I, I heard the stories of him being pretty wild when you guys were recording that album that was definitely the wickedest moment i would say of our career i mean it was definitely it was definitely the craziest time i would say i was talking record. about it with uh, travis on the way over here today like it was like um like because we were talking about the difference in the way his voice sounds in the first and the second record mm -hmm. and you can hear it it's yeah. almost it's, it's hollowed out a little bit yeah. you know because i don't think he was like able to access that emotional like mm -hmm. depth that he mm -hmm. well possessed. cocaine will do that to you yeah right that, that's what it was that will that will rob your soul yeah that's the trade-off it sure will it'll give you a little bit of energy but it'll like gut your soul that's the truth yeah yeah the truth. jj kale has pontificated mm -hmm. on that yeah. very idea yeah. very elaborately yeah, yeah, I love that song. It's so soulful. And all the songs on Soup, sorry that I'm going back to that. Did did everyone, again, write them together? No. At that point, because we all just made a little bit of money, every, the band kind of separates. So, you know, everyone at that point starts to write a little more individually than we uh. had on the first record. We're not living in the same house together, so we're working up the songs together, but, like, people were writing separately for the first time, I would say, on the Soup record, you know? More so. Not all of them, but more so than the, on the first record. And when that came out, th that wasn't really like, it's got amazing songs on it, but it wasn't as much a success as the first album. Not in any way. It was right. it was, it was was panned. Rolling Stone, you know, gave us a, a, a star and a half and said it was a piece of shit. And then 20 years later, they said it was a great record. But at the time... Did they? they? Yeah, absolutely. I don't think they ever did. Yeah, 20 years later, they was like, oh, 90s, one of the great records of the 90s. But at the time, they gave us a you know, star and a half and just just completely so, blew us out. And at that point, that's the most powerful place to find out new about new music. It's, you know, it's pre-internet. Yeah. Now, they, no offense, they don't really mean what they used to mean. You know what I mean? You know, but back then, you know, you looked at Rolling Stone to but tell you But call us cool. if you want to talk. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But we'd love to talk if you want to. <laughs> no, but, you know, they don't have the same meaning as they used to. They just don't. I mean, oh, surely they can admit that too. You know, back then it was like, they were more important in that sense did that have they any slammed effect? us it was real it was not good for us <laughs> did, did it have any effect on you guys it did after the a, album came out you went on a tour yeah i remember pe people being bummed but you know what had it gone on it, it ended so quickly after that had it gone on we would have gotten over it of course would have done, done it was done like a third album but in the time it hurt us in the time it did here I, I think people because we didn't make a song that was like the one that people really liked you yeah. know yeah. Um, we made a weird record, a weird dark record, but we were really proud of it. I thought it was really good at the time, so I was so shocked to find out that, like... The first single on that was Galaxy. Galaxy yeah, yeah. I was like, fools, all of you. Yeah, you know, I was like, right, yeah. Christopher? I thought it was great. We were I was, angry. I, I, no, I, I no. was, I was. It hurt me. Um, I don't know. I mean, it was. I don't think it was a particularly easy listen. Yeah, even for a fan, it was it was weird. It no, no, it take it's like a, it's yeah, a, no, it's no. a grower, it not a shower. Oddly it enough, it has more shelf life now, though. Really? Than That's what you're talking about. To me, I would soup, I would soup. say our fan base like likes the soup record. cavities is yeah. just like yeah, incredible. I love and that Galaxy. Song. Yeah, and yeah. It's yeah. just a great album. So yeah. how long after that came out did Shannon pass? Well, the record came out and he passed a month into the release of the record. If even, uh, okay. if even that, yeah. we like we had been on the tour for like two weeks, I think. We were just getting ready to release Toes Across the Floor, our oh, new video, and then one. Shannon died.